For adding branching or conditional logic, the user needs to navigate to the logic tab in the inspections designer. Here you can define or create rules comprising of a condition that needs to be met and the corresponding action that should be taken. So choose the question, choose the operator, value, and you can also add more questions in the condition and do an AND or OR operation between the conditions as well. Next is the step of defining the actions that need to be taken. You can define the action to show a hidden question if the condition is met or change an optional question to required or skip the focus to another question. Once you have defined the actions, you can apply the rule and close, which shows you the rule in this format in the logic tab. You can edit this rule further or add new rules. Sometimes we need to update the inspections already in use. This can be easily done via the revised capability in inspections. Let me show you an example of a workflow safety inspection. This has already been published and is in use by service tasks. Looking at the versions tab, we see one entry for the published inspection. If we go ahead and revise by clicking this button, the status is changed from published to draft and a new entry for the draft version is created. Once we are done making all the changes in the draft, we can go ahead and publish it. And from that moment on, it would start showing up in the any new work order service tasks that would be created. Let's go ahead and revise. And versions is now showing the draft version for the inspection. Let's go to the designer and make the changes. I'm adding one more question of file upload type and also adding a new page. For a new section on exit doors for the inspection add some questions to the inspection and once I'm all done, I can publish. One more thing to note here is as soon as you add a new page, the logic tab actions list also starts showing another action for make page visible. So once I'm all done, I'll go ahead and publish the new inspection. And in the associated service task types for this inspection, you will start seeing the latest published version. So this is the workflow safety inspection. And as you can see, there is one more question and the next page showing up in the service task type. And any new service task that would be created would get the latest version. Let me show you an existing work order service task. So this is a work order with the safety inspection task. And the inspection here is still pointing to the previous version with the additional question and the additional page not showing up. But if I create a new service task, it will pick the new latest version that we have created. The old service tasks are not updated to reflect the new version. So as you can see, the new task gets the latest published version. Inspection results can be consumed in a variety of ways by creating dashboards or reports or even flow based actions that are triggered on the basis of inspection question responses. If you have added some out of the box flows that can be configured to parse and store individual question answers also in CDS. And that's apart from the inspection response JSON. So to configure analytics, we need to go to field service settings. There is a new tab for inspection and it shows analytics enabled is set to no by default. We need to set it to yes and the default frequency is daily. That means the flows are triggered once daily if this is the setting chosen and that is at the specified time. There are two other frequencies that can be selected. If the frequency is immediately, as soon as the work order service task is marked at complete, the parsing flows are triggered and the responses are immediately available as individual question answers in CDS. 
The third frequency is custom and that lets you configure the interval in terms of number of days. Once the triggered flows are completed, new records are created in the customer voice survey tables. Why customer voice tables? Because leveraging the customer voice schema gets us the analytics that customer voice is doing. Let's look at the tables one by one. First is the customer voice survey or MSFP survey table. This gets the inspection name. This, uh, this is a list of inspections created in this environment. Next, let's look at the customer voice survey question or MSFP question table. This table gets the question text or question titles. As soon as an inspection is published, new records are generated in this table. As you can see, all the question records are there. Next is the question responses table. Survey question response or question response, MSFP question response table gets the individual response records for each of the questions in an inspection. So this contains the response records for each of the question. And lastly is the survey response or MSFP survey response table. This gets the inspection response JSON for the completed inspection. I have created a sample Power BI report which shows the inspection response JSON as well as the individual question responses corresponding to that inspection. So if you look at this chart, it shows the inspection name coming from MSFP surveys and the response JSON coming from survey responses table. If you click on any row, the second chart shows the question text as well as the response corresponding to that question. And this comes from question responses table and the question text comes from the questions table. Looking at one more chart here, you can also drill deeper into a work order and look at all the inspection service tasks associated to a work order. Then you can look at any particular inspection service task and this bottom table shows the inspection name and the questions in that inspection and the corresponding individual answers. And these are coming from the question responses table, questions and the survey name from surveys table. We saw how inspection responses can be used to create reports and dashboards, and you can also retrieve the attachments from CDS and populate those in your reports.